In this video, I'll be going through the 2021 electricity and magnetism paper. Question 1. An air ionizer is a device that uses static electricity to remove dust from the air. As shown in the diagram below, this works by first making dust particles negatively charged when they come in contact with the tip of a fine needle. The needle is connected to a powerful high voltage source that makes it negatively charged. The dust particles are then attracted to a positively charged metal plate and thereby removed from the air. Explain why the needle must be made of a conducting material. Let's quickly break down what's going on. Our dust particles are coming in, our negative charges jump onto the dust particle. Now since the dust particle is negatively charged, it's going to be repelled by our negative needle and attracted to our positive plate. Our needle must be made of a conducting material in order for the charges to flow from it. The needle must be conductive in order for the negative charges to flow through it. How are the dust particles negatively charged and how does this affect their motion? As previously mentioned, our dust particle comes in contact with our needle, and if we consider a negative charge on that needle, we're also going to have a bunch of other negative charges, and that negative charge is going to experience a repulsion in this direction, onto the dust particle. Now, since our dust particle is negatively charged, it's now going to experience a repulsion from the needle and an attraction from the positive plate, making it accelerate towards the right. So let's jot that down. When the dust particle contacts the needle, the negative charges repel each other onto the neutral particle. The dust particle is now negatively charged and is therefore repelled by the negative plate and attracted to the positive plate since opposites attract and likes repel. If negatively charged particles touch a positively charged metal plate, they discharge and become electrically neutral. One discharge event takes 0.008 seconds and involves an energy transfer of 0.4 millijoules, which is 4 times 10 to the minus 4 joules. The discharge current is 2 microamps, which is 2 times 10 to the minus 6 amps. Calculate the voltage between the charged particle and the metal plate. And so we have our time we have our current here, and we have our energy. To find our voltage, we could use our equation that power is equal to current times voltage, rearranging that for voltage by dividing both sides by current. Now we do have the current, but we don't have the power, so we need to find a way to find that. Fortunately, we also know that our power is also equal to energy over time, both of which we have. So putting those numbers in gives me exactly 0.05 watts. Using that in our equation over here gives me 25,000 volts exactly. The discharged dust particles remain attached to the positively charged metal plate. This causes a buildup of dust on the plate. Explain in terms of electrical charge why the plate needs to be cleaned periodically. Let's consider if our dust particles did indeed build up. If we had a new incoming dust particle, then the distance between the positive plate and that dust particle is going to be greater. That means the force of attraction is going to be weaker. So let's write that. The dust particles form an electrically insulated layer, increasing the distance between new incoming dust particles and the positive plate. This results in a weaker force of attraction, reducing the effectiveness of the purifier. Question 2. An office room uses a separate 24 volt power supply to run a set of three LED lamps for a large desk. A part of the circuit is shown in the diagram below. State the voltage that is supplied to each lamp. Since our lamps are wired in parallel with our 24 volt supply, they are each going to receive 24 volts. Show that the current through lamp 1 is 1.2 amps. For this we need to use V equals IR, which relates the voltage across the lamp, the current through the lamp, and the resistance of the lamp. Since we're wanting to find current, we need to rearrange this for I. To do so, we divide both sides by R. We know our voltage is 24, and we know our resistance is 20 ohms. Which gives us exactly 1.2 amps, what we're trying to find. Calculate the current supplied to the set of three lamps by the power supply. 
since all three lamps are identical, they're all 20 ohms, and that we know the current through lamp 1 is 1.2, that must be the current through lamps 2 and 3 as well. So we just need to multiply 1.2 by 3, giving us exactly 3.6 amps. The temperature in the room is controlled by a thermostat. This is a variable resistor in series with a heat pump set in cooling mode, as shown in the diagram below. When the room heats up, the resistance of the thermostat decreases. Describe and explain how the current through the heat pump changes as the office room heats up. So as stated here, as our room heats up, as our temperature increases, our resistance decreases. Now we know that V equals IR, Ohm's law. Given that our power supply voltage will stay the same, if our resistance decreases, then our current must increase. As the room heats up and the thermostat resistance decreases, the total circuit resistance decreases. Since V equals IR and voltage is constant, a reduction in resistance must increase the current. When the room heats up, the resistance of the thermostat drops to 1.9 ohms. Calculate the power rating of the heat pump at this temperature. Start by showing that the total current drawn from the power supply is 9.195 amps. Recall from above our voltage is 240 volts, and our resistance is our thermostat resistance, our 1.9 ohms, but we also have another resistance, our 24.2 ohms, which is in series, meaning that we add it to our 1.9 which gives me a total resistance of 26.1 ohms. Now to find our current, recall that V equals IR, solving this for current by dividing both sides by resistance, and now putting our numbers in. Giving me 9.195 amps. Now to find our power. We know that P equals IV, where we know the current, because we just found it, but the voltage through our heat pump isn't going to be our 240 volts, it's going to be lower. So to find the voltage of our heat pump, we know that V equals IR, where we do know the current through the heat pump, and we also know the resistance is 1.9. So putting those numbers in, gives me 222.5 volts to four significant figures, which we can now use in our power equation giving me 2046 watts to four significant figures. Question three, in Mazda City, Abu Dhabi, the Personal Rapid Transit, PRT, trialed a fleet of small vehicles that use electromagnetism to hover over tracks that have magnets buried beneath them. In the diagram below, label the north and south poles. Magnetic field lines always point away from north and towards south, so this must be the North Pole, and this must be the South Pole. A length of wire in the PRT vehicle is shown in the diagram below. The strength of the magnetic field at point A, 50 centimeters away from the wire, is 3.36 times 10 to the minus six Tesla. Draw an arrow on the diagram above to show the direction of the current through the wire. Using our right hand rule, if our fingers are curling in this direction here. Our thumb points in this direction here, meaning that our current must be towards the left. Calculate the size of the current through the wire given our K value here. We can use the equation on our formula sheet, B equals KI over D, where we know our K, we know our distance, our 50 centimeters, and we know our magnetic field strength. Solving that for our current, I'll first multiply both sides by D, and then divide both sides by K. Putting our numbers in, remembering to convert our 50 centimeters to 0.5 meters, which gives me exactly 8.4 amps. Compare the strength and direction of the magnetic field at point A and point B. Point A is closer to the wire, and so we see that the field lines are closer together, which indicates that the field at point A is stronger. As for the direction, we see that the field at point B is towards our left, and the field at point A must be towards our right. 
As point A is closer to the wire, it experiences a stronger field than point B. The direction of the field at point A is towards the right, and at point B it is towards the left. The diagram below shows the solenoid in the vehicle gliding towards a magnet in the tracks. Describe and explain the direction of the current in the solenoid circuit that pulls the vehicle to the right. In your answer, you should label the poles of the solenoid with N, S or none, required for the field of the solenoid to pull the vehicle to the right. State the required direction of the current in the solenoid circuit, clockwise, counterclockwise or none, and also describe the forces between the solenoid and the vehicle and the permanent magnet. First of all, in order for our vehicle to be pulled towards the right, because we have a south pole here, in order for there to be an attraction, our solenoid must have a north pole here, which means its other side is going to be a south pole. As for the current, if we think about Lenz's law, in order for there to be a north pole, we must have the current going in a counterclockwise direction. The current must be counterclockwise. As for the forces, the forces must be attractive. And we're done.